Today I wanted to share one of my favourite recipes, something for gluten-free pancakes. You're going to need a mixing jug, you're also going to need some eggs, one day we're hoping to have our own but for the moment I need to buy them, some butter, you're going to need tapioca and almond flour, vanilla extract though this is optional and then a spoon and a fork. First thing I'm going to mix together are the flours. I'm going to put four spoons of almond flour and then four spoons of tapioca. The tapioca, because it's quite starchy, can stack up quite high, so you need to be careful that you haven't put way more than you have almond flour. And then I'm going to be putting in a stick of butter. I don't really measure all of these very much, but I have put closer measurements on the blog. I'm going to scrape out whatever I can in the butter dish, since I'm going to be cleaning this afterwards and I don't want to waste the butter. While that's melting, I'm going to mix the flours together and then I'm going to put the butter in as well. Now I want to get every single little piece of this, so once I've poured the butter out, I'm going to be putting the fork across the mixing jug and then just popping this down so that everything that was inside can drip out into the flour. Mix everything thoroughly together. Now, I should point out that you don't necessarily have to do this in the order that I do it, but I noticed that if I put the butter later, it doesn't mix as well and you end up with these little tiny globules of butter just floating on top of everything else so I like to mix it in first with the flour then I add some vanilla extract I've already done a video on how to make this yourself if you want to I like my vanilla extract so I put quite a bit in there and after that's mixed together we're going to go for eggs I'm going to put two eggs in there saving those shells either to go in the compost bin or for various other uses I don't chuck these there is a use that you can get out of them mix that together. Once that's mixed we only need to put the last ingredient which is some milk. If you're allergic to milk or you don't want to drink it you can also substitute this for plant-based milks. It will work just as well. Mix that all together and now we can start making the pancakes. I should also point out that if you don't like doing things by hand and you have a hand mixer or a food processor go ahead and use that. I just quite like doing this by hand. I find it quite therapeutic. And after that's all mixed together, what I'm going to do is take the pan, wait for it to be a little warm, not hot, and I'm going to take the spatula, put a tiny bit of butter on that, and then butter up the whole pan. This is the easiest way that I've found not to lose the first pancake, because sometimes it sticks to the pan and you can't get it off without ruining it. So this way, that doesn't happen, and I don't lose that first pancake. If this is your first time making pancakes and you're not sure when you're going to flip it, what you need to do is, if you're taking the spatula around the edges and it's tearing, then it's not ready to flip. But if you see the edges starting to curl and go brown, then you can flip it. You can either do it the Italian way, where you just flick it with your wrist and the whole thing flips over. Every time I've done that, it's landed in my head, so I don't do that. I just use the spatula and then just keep making pancakes until you've used up all the batter. The amounts that I've shown you today will make about six pancakes. You could probably stretch it out to seven if you keep them really thin, but I made one or two of them a little bit thicker than I would normally. And that's it, you're done. In total it should make about six or seven pancakes. You can either have this with sugar or honey or maple syrup or bacon or whatever you want on top of it. And um, I really like them and if you try them I'm pretty sure you'll like them as well. And as usual, if you like my videos and want to see more content, feel free to follow me on the mailing list. Do not subscribe to me on YouTube. That way you get everything sent directly to your email and I'll have a new video for you soon.